so let's talk about the basic now we'll start the part the configuration part uh, before that we need some basic knowledge of the power ultra game okay Like if you talk about the router, router works on which OS? Can you tell me? iOS. Exactly. So router works on iOS, right? Here again, the Palo Alto is having its own operating system, which is known as Pan OS. Palo Alto network operating system. Okay. It is having its own operating system, which is known as Pan OS, which is basically a free BSD. It's a free BSD software. Palo Alto's developer team developed something on that free BSD software. Okay. And created that Palo Alto own operating system. If you talk about, uh, let me open on the page here. This is the basic device of the Palo Alto. Palo Alto 220. That's the screen of that Palo Alto 220 firewall. The smallest tiny one segment of the Palo Alto. This is the hardware device. Okay. If you talk about, you can see here, there is a management interface and the console. And apart from that, the data interfaces are there, right? So on the management interface, on this interface, by default, Three services are allowed, and on data interface, these eight ports where nothing is allowed. So, on the management interface, ping, SSH, and HTTPS is allowed. On the data interface, <clears throat> no service allowed. We are talking about service. No service is allowed. Is can you mute? Yep. Okay. So on the data interface, no service is allowed by default. Except real time data. Let me write down. So, default IP this is 192.168.1.1 slash 24. Username admin password admin okay so palo alto works on it on its own op operating system which is known as pan os palo alto network operating system which is a free bsd software okay 
Now on the management interface, by default, three services are allowed, ping, SSH, and HTTPS. On data interface, not, no service, nothing is allowed except real-time data, means real stream data. So if someone is connected on the LAN side and trying to access the internet, that is the real-time data or the payload data, right? That data is allowed. Apart from that, no service allowed. I'm, sorry, I'm talking about service, right? Ping is a service, SSH is a service, SSH, HTTPS, HTTP, Telnet, SNMP, these are the services, right? So these services are not allowed. Nothing is allowed on the data interface. But on the management interface, there are three different services are allowed. Why these services are, services are allowed here on the management interface? just for the testing the reachability from the system to the firewall ssh to take the remote access right remotely access of the firewall cli of the firewall right not cli that command line access remotely using ssh and https the secure UI access. That, that could be Telnet also, that could be HTTPS, HTTP only. Why? HTTPS is there, SSH is there, because they both are secure. SSH is secure, right? They use hashing and algo, all the things, so that the traffic is encrypted and secure. They use some bytes, crypto bytes. And HTTPS, obviously, security is there using this S keyword. So that's why ping SSH and HTTPS allowed by default on the management interface. On the data interface, nothing is allowed. These are the data interfaces. This is the management interface. So on the management interface, three services that allow ping SSH and HTTPS. On data interface, nothing is allowed. We'll see this. Okay. We can allow, we can allow the services on the data interfaces also, but by default, nothing is allowed except the payload data or the real time data. Now there is another port, which is console port. As you know that on the console port, if you are having a console cable, you can directly plug in the console cable in the device and you can take the console access of the device and configure the things as per your requirement. From the management interface, you, you, have, you can connect the PC with the same IP range, which is uh, default 192.168.1.1/24. You can take the SSH of that Palo Alto firewall. Okay. Let me start the lab. <clears throat> Hello, uh, Ravi. Yes, tell me. Uh, yeah. Uh, how to, uh, I mean, uh, you are going to tell, tell us like how to set up this lab, right? In our laptop. Yeah. What are the, what are the basic requirement with, software, I mean, with, uh, uh, I mean, uh, simulator we have to use these all things also you are going to tell, right? No? Yeah. Admin will provide you the, 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 the that virtual environment, right? That, uh, operating system. You, if yeah, you, yeah. Uh, yeah tell me. Uh, what I'm, uh, what I'm asking, uh, like, see, we need to practice at our home. So, how could you, how could we practice so that it'll be uh, good uh, in real environment when we get opportunity? So, how yeah. could we do practice at our home? <clears throat> there are basically two types of labs here. Okay, the first one is you can install the virtual environment in your system. Okay, the second one is you can open 
for uh, that uh, 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 that uh, online lab. For that, you need to connect with the admin. Okay, but for the lab setup in your system, I'll guide you that. Uh, for, I'll guide you for that. So, so firstly, you need the resources in your system. Okay, minimum sixteen GB of RAM is required in your system, in your laptop. Four cores required. Okay. That's enough. That's sufficient. Obviously, 16 GB of RAM is there. Minimum 16 GB RAM is there in your laptop. It means you are using i5 9th or 10th generation or maybe i7 7th or 8th generation. Right. So 16 GB of RAM is required minimum and four cores are required for the virtual lab setup in your system in your local system okay the second one is this is for local system lab means your system lab the second one is online lab online server is there and for that you need to connect with the admin Maybe you need to connect with the nearest server. Okay. They will guide you how you can opt for this online lab because they have set it up a server. And that server is like already uh, like candidates are using that server. So, firstly, you need to connect with the admin. And uh, they, then they like he will guide you like how you can take the access of that online lab. Okay. Okay. But again, uh, mm -hmm. can I? Can we uh, know like uh, who's the person? I mean, I just need to need the contact detail, and I need to know the uh, structure. Uh, how what is how they are, we have? I mean, how they are charging us? So charges mm -hmm. and all. I need to know. So can you? Whom guide, you connect, uh, Whom you connected with this? Uh, like first, first point of contact. Who is there? Who, like, whom you connected with this? Uh, uh, this session. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. I got. So I have to talk to him uh, for the lab, right? Right. right. Uh, okay, great. That's great. Okay. Yeah, I will talk to but him. He or she will guide you like how you can open the lab and uh, what is the charge. I'm not sure what is the charge for that for online labbing. There's some charges. So they will guide you for that. And if you want to install that lab in your system, you can. But for that, you need the this like these minimum resources 16 gb of ram and four cores are should be there in your system okay great okay i got uh, now so. so i'll share like if you want to install the lab in your system i'll share the operating systems okay i'll share the i'll create a one uh, online drive and in that i'll place all the operating systems you can download that operating system and then firstly you need to install the virtual machine that vmware workstation in your system and on that vmware workstation you need to install the virtual machines i'll guide you that like what is the step by step process okay i'll guide you right. all the process and i'll help you out to set up a lab in your system yeah thank Let's... you yeah you're welcome so Let's move to the lab. So this is the basic one, uh, basic feature set of the not feature set, the basic information of the Palo Alto. Palo Alto works on, on its own operating system, which is known as PanOS. The management interface by default, ping, SSS, and HTTPS is allowed. Only these three services are allowed. We can like uh, allow some other services also, but by default, only these three services are allowed. On data interface, nothing is allowed only the real time or payload data is allowed okay by default the ip range is this 192.168.1.1 username admin and the password is admin by default okay so these basic things should be in your mind and we'll do the lab for for uh, today's session the basic lab what we'll do today uh, will have have a LAN zone, the van zone, or maybe inside zone or outside zone, and we'll try to configure some policies so that 
our traffic, our land traffic can easily uh, pass through the firewall and can reach to the internet. We'll do this lab today, okay? And that we are going to cover some, like we, we are going to cover the LUD zone, the interface configuration and the security policy and the netting, okay? So we are going to do that. Let's jump to the lab. Let me create the lab, okay? This is the small topology, right? Land side, we can use the IP as 10.0, 20.0.0. That's 24. Land. And uh, zone name will be when it is inside. Okay. IP by default 192, 168, 1.0 slash 24. That's the management interface. There is no zone requirement because it's a management interface. And for the outside IP, we are using the DSCP network. Zone will be van. or we can say outside, okay? Topology is clear, very small topology, right? This is the user. 
who is connected on the zone inside land side the zone name is inside this is the management pc from where i i have i like i'll manage this follow to firewall all the configuration part okay you can see here it's written as the management so this pc is connected on the management this pc is connected on the data interface on the land side and this interface is the wan interface where the internet is connected the ip is dscp okay for now we are using dscp i'll tell you why because this interface is going to take the ip directly from my physical nic card of my laptop okay this is the virtual machine actually but this interface is going to take the ip direct directly from my uh, my my you can say uh, from my physical nic card the physical nic card of my laptop why this is required so that i can like access the internet on my virtual machine i can use the router here also i can check the ping connectivity i can check the ssh also but i have to show you how the internet actually works on a on a virtual machine we'll do the lab in later classes where we are going to use the routers for connectivity we are going to use the routers for with the static routes default routes even with the dynamic routing also but for today today is testing we are just using the internet with the basic configuration we will allow all the things just to show you the touch of the palo alto firewall okay now again there are two different modes of configuration you can take the cli the console access of the palo alto firewall or you can take the ui using a management pc so we are going to configures all the things from ui directly but i'll show you a reference how you can configure the, the same thing using the cli also using the console also okay but ui is much simpler i'm not sure like in future you are going to use the cli uh, for the configuration part or for the troubleshooting part of the palo alto firewall ui is much or enough mature you can say enough mature you can perform all the things all the configuration and uh, troubleshooting directly from the ui let's back to the lab <clears throat> so this is the very scratch first time i'm logging in in the firewall in the palo alto firewall we can assume this firewall is newly delivered to the site nothing is configured it's uh, just a black box we have to configure the firewall how we can do that we just need to connect the laptop or desktop with the management pc first okay then you have to configure the ip address the this range ip address we talked about this right 192.168.1.1 is the default ip of the management interface of the palo alto so we have to use the same series ip we can use 1.2 or 1.100 it's up to us let me configure the ip Ninety two one sixty eight one dot hundred subnet is okay. Right. 
192.168.1.1 is the default IP. Username admin, password admin by default, right? So here the IP range is okay. I thought IP range is okay. Can you guide me here? We can use this IP or not? Yeah, we can use. Okay, great. Plus 24. So it is perfect. Subnet mask also. Plus 24. Uh, one more thing. Uh, this is the topic of routing switching. We'll cover it because we are going to touch all the things like of all the routing switching concepts. So why default like default gateway is required here or not? Can you tell me? There no, is not, not, not required. Why default gateway no. is not required? Not only it's the same subnet because we are also direct connected with managing port. Yeah. Both of you are correct. So we are directly connected with the management interface and that IP is the part of the same subnet. So default gateway is not required. We can utilize that gateway, but as of now, there is no requirement for that. IP is perfect. Let's try to check the connectivity. CMD 192.168.1.100. My own IP address thinking means interface is up. My laptop's interface is up. That virtual laptop. Now 1.1 .1 is pinging. <clears throat> so, so the first service is tested, means ping is working on the management interface, right? Let's take the access. HTTP, which service is allowed here? HTTPS, right? Here, HTTPS service is allowed, right? Yes. 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 Let's take the access from HTTP. Column, column. dot one and in the other tab https column column slash slash one eighty two one sixty eight one dot one here we are using https and here we are using http on the http we are not able to access here on the https the access is com coming up just click on this, proceed to 192.168.1.1. But still, here on the HTTP, we are not able to access. So second uh, second uh, service is tested, means HTTPS is working, not HTTP. Let's take, uh, try to access with the third service, 192.168.1.1. And we are using SSH. Click OK. We can access. Right. So means all these three services are working. On the management interface, ping, SSH, and HTTPS, all the services are working. All these three services are working. Right. So by default, what's the username and password here? Admin, admin. Right. Admin, admin. For both, for CLI, like for SSH, for console, or for UI. Default username and password is same. Admin, admin.
this is the basic fundamental uh, like information of that version which i'm using here in this machine so it is showing welcome to pan os 7.1 so this virtual machine is working on 7.1 right and their information you can go through with this information so uh, for now we are just moving forward so this is the first dashboard screen of the Palo Alto Firewall. When you log in in the first uh, log in first time in the Palo Alto Firewall, this information is going to be reflected on your screen, the dashboard. Okay. In this dashboard, multiple things are written. The first one is you can see the general information, the device name, Palo Alto VM, management IP, which is default 1.2.1.6.1.1 and the net mask is this ipv6 address is not configured by default you can configure that as that one as well but as of now it is not required because most of the infras if you talk about it still they are running ipv4 address like if you talk about india's ministries only three uh, ministries move to the ipv6 only three ministries i'm not sure how much and number of ministries are there in, in the government sector but only three ministries move to the ipv6 and in the back end they are using ipv4 because they are not relying on ipv6 as of now <clears throat> so the mac address of the management interface the model it's Palo alto virtual machine serial number is unknown because this box is not licensed. That's why it is not showing unknown. Once the box is licensed, then it will show you the serial number alphanumeric keys. Okay. And for the licensing, this two information is required, the CPU ID and that UUID. Okay. We'll see how that thing is required in the licensing in the future classes. So CPU ID and the UID is required in the licensing. Here, logged in admin, like multiple things is already reflected on the dashboard. You can uh, find all the informations. Logged in admins. So it is showing someone is logged in with the admin account. The IP of the user is this and he used web access, right? Idle for this time, session is started at this time. Now here the system logs. authenticated for user admin from this IP, user admin logged in via web from this IP. Good. So this information is there on the dashboard. Now, if you want to change something like, or if you want to add something here on the dashboard, how you can do that? Here is the option of widgets. We, have, we can use two different options here, the layout and the widgets. And the third one is the sync time because all the tabs are different. Admin logged in admin information is different. General information is different. So like how much time that information should be synced with the firewalls actual tab. So you can change the timing of that sync also here. By default, it's five minutes, 300 seconds. Let's see how we can manipulate the dashboard. So let just click on the widgets here. You can see the application system logs are there. Let's suppose I want to see the interface information also on my screen. So interface is not added here. That's why it is showing as yeah, in the bold words. Apart from that, general information is already there. System resource is already there. Interface is not there. Just click on this simple. That interface tab is added here. And now you have the option, you can easily drag that interface information. Like if you want to see that inf information, interface information in the second row, you can just drag it to third one. If you want to see that interface information in the third row, simple. What is the use of this row? Like uh, why we are dragging into first row, second row something like Yes. Firstly, dashboard is there, like if you are accessing any uh, device, network device as of now in the market. So they 
you know, they uh, utilize that dashboard information. So in the dashboard, it means like all the information which is required to you should be on a single page. Okay. Now okay. you have the options. You have the options to add multiple uh, like uh, information on a single page, on a single dashboard. It's up to you. You want to utilize that or not. You want to utilize the default one or you want to like, for example, uh, data logs is there, right? You, you don't want to see the data logs. Just click on remove this from the dashboard. It's up to you. Or you want to add uh, anything like threat logs. If you I want to see the threat logs information here on the dashboard, just add this. It's up to you. You can man man manage or manipulate the da dashboard as, as per your requirement. So that you okay, multi yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Multiple, uh, multiple uh, uh, logs we can see in a single page. You mean to say? Yeah. Multiple information, not exactly logs. Uh, multiple information. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So multiple, multiple information, information you can see in a single page. Right. right. So here in the uh, login admins, only admin account is logged in with the with the client as web. Right. Let's take the. Uh, Console access of the Palo Alto. Again, the admin. This is the console of the Palo Alto firewall. So now I'm in the login page. Okay. Let's see. How can I see the LAN and mentor page on the dashboard? Come again. How can we see the LAN interface, LAN interface on the dashboard? Just like interface we have. Suppose you have the interface, we to see the LAN interface and interface on the dashboard so that we can check the ports up and down and what is LAN is going on the LAN side. No, it is not going to show you that much of information. Mm -hmm. Like it is going to show you the interface information, like how much in in interfaces are there, right? And mm -hmm. how much interfaces are up and down. Okay. And if you want to see the LAN zone interface or WAN zone interface, for yes, 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 you yes, need to it. move to the network. Because on the dashboard, uh, like you cannot see all the information. Hi, like you can see the like uh, required information. Apart from that, if you want to go deep dive in that particular segment, like you you ask for the LAN and LAN zone. So for that, we have to move to the interface network. Here we can see the zone information, like which zone is part of which interface. Okay, so now I logged in with the uh, console also in the Palo Alto firewall, but still it is showing me a single account as admin with the web, right? Let's refresh this. Now it changed the information. Now two admin accounts are logged in. The first one is the web. The second one is the CLI, right? Yeah, right. So this is all about the dashboard. Not all about, uh, so it's about widgets. Now here is the option for the sync. Here are three different times, one, two, five minutes or manual sync. Right, by default, it's five minutes. You can refresh this button click to refresh all the steps will be uh, like refreshed if you man if you put as manual so at that time you have to sync manually okay the third one is the layout as three columns right you can manipulate it as two columns only or three columns it's up to you Three columns means three different columns. You can easily manage all the information. Or if you want to utilize that dashboard in two columns only, so it's up to you. You can easily change the information. Got it? Let me know if you have any doubt in dashboard. I think pretty much simple. Uh, 
Okay. So now we logged in with the admin account, right? With the, the default user and password as admin admin, right? So we can change that information, that user account information. We can change the password for admin. How we can do that? There are two different options. First one is here on the lower left side. It is showing you are logged in with the admin account. The last login timer is this and log out. You can log out from here. Right? Are you able to see the screen? Yes. Yes. Just click on the admin. Now it will ask you the old password, new password, and then confirm password, then okay. Right, simple. We can change the password directly from here. The second way, how we can change the password. It's simple, like we can see the, the admin account here and we can change the password. But if I want to change the password directly, uh, not directly with the process. So here in the device tab, administrator, device tab, administrator, here is the admin account. Click on this simple, again, old password, new password and confirm password. Let's change the password. Mm -hmm. Old is admin, default password. Mm -hmm. Follow P A L O at the right one, two, three, P in capital. P A L O at the right one, two, three. Click OK. Like if you talk about the router, the router, you have to uh, save the configuration using do write, right? Do write and copy running configuration to start up configuration. These commands are there in the router to, co uh, to co copy that configuration, that running configuration to the startup configuration. But here in the Palo Alto, we have to use the commit. Okay. Like if there is a router and you change something, for example, you configure something, uh, some interfaces, you configured an IP, IP address on any interface, then you have to con you have to save that configuration using two different, like there are two different ways. You can use do write directly, or you have to put the command as copy running configuration to a startup configuration. But here in the Palo Alto, the, that uh, saving the configuration is the part of commit. We have to use the commit, okay? Concept is a bit different. We have to use commit instead of do write or that command copy running to startup. Understood? So we change the, the password only, nothing else. The default password was admin. Now we change it to follow at uh, follow that one, two, three, P in capital. Then increase the resolution first. So we change this. Now this commit tab is enabled. Just click on this and commit, simple. Any doubt? Any query in this part, that commit part, or how to change the password of the admin account?
Okay, let's move ahead. So now the commit is not enabled. It means nothing is configured yet. Once we configure something, that commit will be enabled and then we have to save the configuration. Right? Device, again, set up. Majority of the configuration, if you talk about the Palo Alto, majority of the configuration is there in the policy, object, network, and device. These four tabs are required for the majority of the configuration. Apart from that, monitor is there to monitor the traffic and dashboard, and we already talked about this. So for the configuration part, these four tabs are required, policy, object, network, and device. Around 90% or 95% uh, configuration and like, I'm not sure like uh, whether you are going to uh, monitor or ACC or dashboard, but here, if you are configuring something, then policy, object, network, and device is required. I'm not sure like whether in future you are going to check for the monitoring, but whenever you log in in the Palo Alto firewall, these four tabs are required for you. So in the device, we change the password first. Now we'll see on the like on the management interface what is like already uh, by default allowed. So for that device setup, device setup is the management interface setting, which is default. Just click on this setting button which is upper side of that management interface setting. Click on this, simple. By default, the IP is static. This is the IP with this subnet mask. And by default, we talked about this, right? Three services are allowed. Ping, SSH, and HTTPS only. Nothing more than that. There are multiple services, HTTP, SNMP, user ID, right? All the services are there, but by default, only three services are allowed. Ping, SSH, and HTTPS. Let's uh, change the IP, 10.1, and we are allowing HTTP traffic only. Oh, also, okay. There is an option for permitted IP addresses. What's that mean? If you want to authentic, like allow some of the users only to take the UI access or CLI access through management interface. You can map the IP range here, or you can ma map a single IP address here. Like if you map some IP addresses here, for example, you map three different IP of this subnet here. So only this IP range can, can easily access the, uh, that Palo Alto firewall. Apart from that, no one can access the Palo Alto firewall. Getting my point. It is permitted IP range, IP addresses. Okay. So those IP whom you permit to take access of the Palo Alto firewall through the management interface, only those people can take access. And how you can identify the user using the IP addresses, which you map here. Let's suppose I'm mapping my own IP, which is 192, 168, 10.100. I'm, I'm, I have not changed the IP on the user side. I'm just mapping one of the IP of this uh, subnet. I'm just assuming this is the management PC. As of now, it is 1.100, right? We have to change that IP on the user side. And we allowed the HTTP service. Click OK, simple. And then commit.
Why the XS is not coming? Can you tell me? Because we change the IP address, right? We change the IP address of the management interface. <clears throat> as of now, it is 1.100, but on the management interface, we configure as 10. So we can use the IP as 192.168.10.100. Let's change the IP first. Like, let's try to take access through 101. 10.101. Thing 192, 168, 10.1. Can I ping the, that IP which is there on the call alto? No, because that IP is not allowed. That machine's IP, that laptop's IP is not allowed. 101 is not allowed to take access, right? That's why ping is not working. Let's change the IP to 10.100. Click OK. Simple. Let's ping the, that IP now. It's pinging. Right? Understood? What's the difference here? Any doubt? Earlier, we are pinging that IP, that management IP using one of the user who is having 101 IP. That's why it is not pinging. Now we change the IP as 10.100. So now I am able to ping that 10.1. Why? Because here we allowed, let's take the access again of the Palo Alto. It's not 1.1 now, it's 10.1, not here or here. HTTPS traffic, HTTPS, colon slash slash 92.168. 10.1. The access is also coming, right? Okay. What's the username admin? We change the IP, uh, password, right? Which is follow. P L O at that one, two, three. We can access using the new password. the device setup management so here the ip is changed and we can access uh, to this ip only now let's check the http whether http service is working or not 10.1 let's try to access using this now i can access using http traffic only right any doubt guys let me know if you are in doubt till this point we are doing the basic part basic configuration here for today let me know if you have any queries any doubt till this point so the basic configuration of the follow alto Only we need to configure UI model. Okay. So we done oh. management interface configuration change. We done all these things, and we change the admin account password. We check that password is working. Let's move to the basic command line. If we talk about the command line of the Palo Alto, already we are logged in in the Palo Alto firewall using that. Let me log in again. Admin. Follow. Enter it. One, two, three.
So we are here in the uh, console of the Palo Alto firewall. So what basic commands are required? Show system info. If you click on this, uh, let me take the SSH on the CLI actually. It is showing some small stuff. Let me take the access of the SSH. Start of IP change. 192, 168, 10.1. Yes. Admin. Hello. Add that one, two, three. Show system info. The first command. If you use show system info, it is going to show you the system information, complete system information. The host name, the IP address configured, the net mask, the default gateway is not there, right? Apart from that, uh, IPv6 information, if you configure this timing on the follow to firewall, up timer of the firewall. The family, it is the VM family, it is not the hardware box. Model number, model of the Palo Alto serial number is unknown as the firewall is not licensed, right? Then this CPU ID is UID, which is required for the licensing. Now VM mode, it is KVM. And apart from that, like multiple information is there. So what is the command? Show system info. This is the first command, right? The second command is show interface. Not here. Oh, sorry. Uh, here we have we are using configure, like in the router we use enable to move to the global configuration mode. But here in the Palo Alto we have to use configure to move to the global configuration mode. Just configure, not configure terminal, only configure. Now you are in the global configuration mode. Okay. Now you can configure anything from directly from here. Like if you want to configure something, then we have to use set command here. Yeah. We'll check all the commands later in the later classes. Let's back to the uh, show interface management. Once you click on this show interface management command, this command is used to show you the management interface information. Here you can see the management IP address, the net mask, gateways unknown for now, right? IPv6 information is also unknown. Nothing is configured here. Now here you can see the some information like byte received, byte transmitted, packet received, packet transmitted on the management interface. This is for the management interface. Okay. This information, this packet transmission is on the management interface only because we are checking this command show interface management. Right. Show interface management is done. Show system information is done. Configure is required to move to the global configuration mode. Two more commands for today. Show device config. Uh, sorry, in the configuration mode. Show device config. When you click on this, it is going to show you the complete configuration. It's not like the router in a single sequence. It is going to show you that information in this manner. System information in that the IP is there, mask is there, right? Time zone is not, not configured for now. Services, all the information. This is show device configuration, right? And if you want to see the complete configuration set, show device configuration system. Almost the same information is there. Okay, so device configuration, 
system and show device configuration. Almost the same information is there in both the commands. Let me know, guys, if you have any doubt to this point. The basic command set required for the checking of the configuration on the follow alto. I think we covered today's topic for the lab. We'll do the lab tomorrow, the next session, because before, before that, we have to cover that device step, complete device tab information, that this device tab information, the management, the multiple things, general settings, phenomena settings, all the things, we'll cover this, then we'll move to the lab. And lab will be the same, like this will be the lab. We have to, like, configure some policy from land to where the user, land user can access the internet. Okay. Let me know if you have any doubt till this point, any queries. Right. Anyone, any doubt? Okay, thank you. But when is next? Uh, we have to, of course. We'll meet you same time tomorrow. This tomorrow, nine o'clock. Huh? Yeah, nine o'clock. We'll start from nine. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll cover the complete uh, that lab setup. The basic. We'll, tomorrow we'll going to cover the complete basic of the follow to firewall with the basic like uh, of uh, policies. Mm -hmm. We'll try to configure. The policy from LAN to WAN so that user, the LAN user, can access the internet with the default, like with a, with allowing all the things. We are not blocking, okay? We are not going to block anything here. We are just allowing all the things so that user can access the internet. So for that, we are going to utilize the NAT. We are going to utilize the security policies. Even the routing, we'll see the routing, okay? And apart before that, we are going to cover the device. Device tab. Device tab is here. So for now, we covered this management interface setting. We change the IP addresses and we enable one of the service. We change, oh, sorry, we allowed only single IP address to access this Palo Alto firewall and that is working. We change the admin account password. That is also working. We change that default password to the required password. That is also working, right? Tomorrow we are going to cover that complete setup of the device tab, and we'll do the part, the, that part, that basic part, which is required for communication from this zone to the internet. Okay, guys. Let's wind up the lab. We'll meet you tomorrow at nine. We'll move <laughs> further here in the lab. Okay. Okay.